Our headlines for you today. Former US President Donald Trump is criminally charged over his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Here, the Scottish MP Margaret Ferrier, who broke COVID lockdown rules, loses her seat, triggering a by-election. The Fire Brigade's union says it will write to the government over serious concerns about the migrant barge, the Bibby Stockholm. And how much can you trust the customer reviews you see online? As part of a BBC investigation, we found examples of fake ones, even for things like medical clinics. I'll have all the details. Good morning. England can take a breather after beating China at the Women's World Cup. After a 6-1 win, the next stop is the last 16, where they'll play Nigeria on Monday. Pop star Lizzo is being sued by three of her former dancers over claims including sexual harassment and a hostile work environment. The singer, who is, of course, known for celebrating her body and self-love, is also accused of weight-shaming while on tour. Lizzo has been approached for comment. Strictly Come Dancing judge Anton Dubeck has revealed he was stabbed by his father as a child. 57-year-old said he was stabbed in the leg and stomach during a Boxing Day altercation at his home, leading him to spend three days in hospital. Cold calling to offer financial services or products could be banned under new government plans outlined today. The Home Office says fake scams cost the economy £750 million in the last year. Our correspondent Robin Brandt has more. The scamming industry is a huge one. Most of it originates online. But the government is moving to further protect those targeted by cold calls. They're often the most vulnerable. Scams have a massive impact across the board. There are financial impacts, but there are also massive emotional impacts on victims. And the problem that you've got is once you've been put on what's often referred to as a suckers list, which is a really awful phrase, but once your information is out there, you can be retargeted by scammers. Bans are already in place that outlaw cold calling on pensions and claim management services. Now the Home Office wants to go further and look at outlawing calls that push people into buying fake or fraudulent investments. It says sham cryptocurrencies, mortgages and insurance are top of the list. Tougher measures to tackle illegal advertising online are also being considered. Although tech firms will have a crucial role there in any enforcement aimed at protecting vulnerable adults and children. Robin Brandt, BBC News. Out this morning's front pages for the first time this Wednesday morning. The eye has bad news on the economy, reporting that the Bank of England is set to raise interest rates tomorrow and several times more in the run up to Christmas. The Express looks at the latest fall in house prices but says the markets will weather the storm and bounce back next year. The Guardian leads with a warning from firefighters that the Bibby Stockholm, that barge intended. The migrants may be, in their words, a death trap. The Mail says Just Stop Oil activists are boasting about claims they're starting to shape Labour's policies on the environment. Uh, the Metro reports that a new pill dubbed by scientists of the Holy Grail of cancer cures is being tested on humans. The Times says artificial intelligence is helping radiologists spot more breast cancer cases and relieving pressure on the NHS. The Telegraph reports that future first-time offenders may avoid courts and be given cautions instead to ease the massive backlog in the court system. And the FT reports business leaders are relieved that the UK's plans to replace the EU's product quality mark, the CE sign, have been dropped to avoid tying them up in even more red tape. The Mirror speaks to Strictly Come Dancing judge Anton Dubeck about being stabbed by his father when he was a young man. And the star says NASA lost the Voyager 2 space probe for a while after accidentally switching off its antenna. Now, if you uh, want to see any of those front pages again or read the stories, then do scan the QR code on your screen.